When I started my research about Wonyo, the first person I reached out to was Dr. Robert Boswell. At the time, he was the professor of Korean Buddhism in UCLA, and he oversaw the English translation of the complete works of Wonyo. His personal story was quite intriguing too. The question that I had in my mind as I was a teenager was how do you live without exploiting other people? That kind of are a spark for, for thinking about, your, you know, about what your life means in a sense. And um, I kind of found in Buddhism an answer to that, which is that you can live uh, a sort of non-attached way of life uh, without clinging to your own personal point of view, but trying to see things from this sort of very broad perspective, very open perspective. Dr. Boswell, what is enlightenment? Um, I think enlightenment really comes down to one thing. It's removing the personal point of view that we think of as being our self. And by removing that personal point of view, we now can see the world from a, from a, a much broader perspective, a perspective in which uh, rather than seeing things as divided between self and other, between right and wrong, and good and evil, uh, South Korean and North Korean, American and Chinese, whatever it might be, all these bifurcations break down. And instead, one sees all things in this kind of multivalent level of interconnection, one thing with the other, where all things are simultaneously creating and being created by all other things. And so even in one Hyo's own case, when he has his own personal enlightenment experience, he realizes that all of these bifurcations, dichotomies, all this diversity that he sees in his world is a self-creation. It's a projection of his own mind, of his own personal point of view. When Won Hyo writes about enlightenment, he really talks about two qualities of enlightenment. One is that enlightenment is something which is actually innate to us, what he calls original enlightenment. It's that quality of sentience, that sentience which, which unites and is common to all sentient beings, that awareness of the world around us, um, which kind of exists even before we have the subject-object bifurcation, where we see things in terms always of our own personal point of view. But at the same time, the reality is that we do see things from this personal point of view. And so while enlightenment may be innate, it's also something that has to be acquired. And he calls this actually acquired enlightenment, is the way he describes this. We actually have to go through a process of, of kind of enacting our enlightenment. So when we complete the process of becoming enlightened, what we have created is simply what has always already been there. It's nothing new. So in other words, enlightenment is not created. Enlightenment is, is simply recognized or recognized in a sense uh, as something that has always been present. What is the main teaching of Won Hyo? What Won Hyo's most important goal is, is to try to explain how all the different teachings of Buddhism, despite their obvious differences and despite in some cases being almost diametrically opposed to each other, all these teachings are really expressing what he calls the experience of the one mind, or in some cases, the one mind of original enlightenment, where the Buddha even, for example, talked about all of his teachings have a single taste, the taste of enlightenment, just as all the different streams that, uh, that empty into the ocean all have a single taste, the taste of salt. And one who was looking for that single taste, that taste of enlightenment in all of the works that he, that he reads and then finally comments upon. So we have many different strands of Buddhism, all of which were coming into Korea almost simultaneously, all of which he's trying to sort through and understand how these different messages could all be part of a singular Buddhist message how all of this could in fact have been enunciated and articulated by the single person of the Buddha himself. And to do this, uh, he, he, he takes this approach of what he calls reconciling doctrinal controversies. And his fundamental approach here is to try to demonstrate how really all these different teachings of Buddhism are really attempts to vivify and to explain what the experience of enlightenment is. 
what differentiates Wonyu from other Buddhist scholars. Wonyu was a great scholar and spent much of his life uh, very deeply engaged with Buddhist texts. But at the same time, Wonyu was also very concerned to find a way to make these teachings accessible to a broad audience. And so we're, we're told in his biographies that at a certain point he was writing a commentary to what clearly was one of the most important texts of his time, a text called the Avatamsaka Sutra, or the Flower Garland Sutra. And we're told that as he's writing his commentary, uh, he looks like he's about halfway through the text, and it says at one point he just decided to lay down his brush. And this is a term that um, is used in a variety of ways, but one suggestion it is, is that this was when he sort of retired from scholarship and decided that rather than they continue to write these very elaborate commentarial explanations about what Buddhism was, that he would now go out among the people to try to, try to teach them about Buddhism directly. He goes around um, uh, singing and dancing his way through Korea, teaching the people about uh, Buddha, the name Buddha, about reciting the name of the Buddha, while actually enacting this in person, in song and dance. And so one here was, was living a way of life that, um, that is really breaking down these barriers between the monastic community and the lay community, between uh, sacred and ordinary ways of life, uh, and trying to show a way between all of these kind of social dichotomies, social bifurcations that he perceives in the world as a whole. And so in his own practice, he's trying to embody what this insight that he has gleaned from Buddhist texts actually was.